Hello everyone and welcome to the Return of Rome campaigns, the new campaigns in the game of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. This is AV1 though, kind of ported into AV2. So we're going to be playing AV2 engine, but we're essentially playing Age of Empires 1. We're going to play start off with the Sargon of Akkad uh, campaign. And it says, an unlikely man rises to power in the city-states of Mesopotamia. Sargon is, an, is a simple cupbearer to the king, but everything changes when the war goddess Ishtar appears in his dreams. Under her guidance, Sargon leads the quarreling Sumerians into a new age, but the seductive nature of power forces him to choose between his divine destiny and his personal ambition. In this campaign, you will play as the Sumerians. So, without further ado, let's kick it off. First mission is called The Chosen One. And we make sure to put the difficulty on hard. The campaign has two stars difficulty, so it's supposed to be like medium hard kind of thing. But obviously, we have the hard difficulty, so we'll see. What happens there? Let's I go. The ways of the gods are incomprehensible. Far more predictable is the path walked by a man who considers himself a god. So too it was for Sargon, the greatest conqueror Mesopotamia has ever known. Mesopotamia. Like the legendary shepherd that founded our great city, Sargon seemed to have descended from heaven a grown man, crafted by the gods to rule the world. But while his true origins remain a mystery, his earthly story began here, in Kish, a place so beautiful that even the lustrous words of the poets cannot do it justice. Back when I, Ushar, was still a man of youthful strength, Kish was ruled by Urzababa. If the gods had molded Sargon from clouds and ether, Urzababa was made from common clay. Nothing about him was exceptional. Save for his fondness for fine food, <laughs> extravagant clothes, and luxurious wine. Urzababa had appointed Sargon as his cupbearer, and the shy, unassuming adolescent served him wine and kept him company in many a lonely hour. Yet, unbeknownst to the king, Sargon was plagued by a strange, recurring dream. Ishtar, the goddess of war, appeared to Sargon in his sleep and promised him extraordinary things. One day, she said, he would be king not only of Kish, but of all the land between the Euphrates and the Tigris. Not realizing the weight of his words, Sargon told his master of the dream, and the king turned pale. Had the boy who served him every day truly been chosen by the goddess of war, Urzababa could not allow this prophecy to come true. Makes sense. He banished Sargon to the desert, and <clears throat> in doing so, he convinced Sargon that the goddess had spoken truly. It was just a dream, bro. Banishment was not enough for the frightened king. He soon sent Kish's most vigorous warriors to ambush his former confidant among the dunes. I was one of those men. As a smith, I was the strongest. And when Urzababa ordered me to swap my hammer for a sword, I accepted. But not without hesitation. By now, the tale of the banished servant and his dreams had spread far beyond the royal palace. Many who suffered under Urzababa's rule saw Sargon as a savior. When I finally caught How up with him in the remote well, he was resting in the shade. I left my sword in its scabbard and faced a man who showed no fear. In his mind, he was no longer a simple servant. He was indeed Ishtar's chosen one. That's it. Okay, cool. For those who don't know, it's the Constitutional Day of Norway, National Day of Norway. So every Norwegian congratulates each other. Hello, Emma. How's it going? Um, that was a long intro. <clears throat> What I always don't understand there is like, if I was king and ruler and I never wanted to lose my throne, if a servant came to me, hey, I had this dream and a prophecy, a vision that I'm going to be the king, I would kill him on the spot. Just saying. Like, why, why banish him and then send people to kill him? It's kind of, kind of weird, don't you think? 
But I mean, it is what it is. Sargon and Ushar must survive. Sargon is restricted to the Bronze Age and a population limit of 75. You do not have the means to build docks yet. Sumerian villagers' high hit points make them more resistant to wild animals and early enemy rushes. Their fertile farms also yield more food than those of other civilizations. Priesthoods loyal to Ur-Sababa lead the city-states of Sippar and Borsippa. Destroying their temples and building your own there, or you're building your own where they once stood, will convince the cities to join your cause instead. Do not hesitate to use Sargon in battle once you have obtained a base. Should he be wounded, he will retreat to your temple and return to the fight after he has recovered. A little bit contradictive with uh, Sargon must survive, but okay. Uh, it says after you obtain a base though, so it's fair enough. <laughs> if that happens, it doesn't turn into a story. That's true, that's true. After being banished for, from Kish, Sargon has reached a spring where he can quench his thirst after days of wandering. Another wanderer has arrived. Is he a friend or an enemy? Ursababa is not satisfied with Sargon's exile. Some of the king's infantry and archers are roaming the area, probably tasked with assass assassinating. That's a lot of S's in a very short... Uh, uh, five letters and four of them are S's. All right. Actually, it says ass... Uh, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, assassinating uh, Sargon. Ursababa himself dwells in his capital of Kish, guarded by a strong force of priests and chariots. To overthrow Ursababa, Sargon must storm Kish, which is defended by infantry, archers, and catapults. Sippar and Borsippa are cities ruled by priests loyal to Ursababa. Sippar's army consists of archers and catapults, while Borsippa primarily uses short swordsmen and axemen. What's interesting, going to be interesting here, compared to AV2, or I mean, this is still AV2, I always don't know how to word that, but I don't really know the strength and units and all that stuff in this one, so it's going to be a bit different. Sababa has sent assassins to kill me? How would you know that if you are not one of them yourself? You are perceptive, Sargon. I understand why Urzababa fears you so much, but there is no time to talk. Let me prove my loyalty to you. There is the traitor called Sargon. What are you waiting for, Shah? Help us hunt down the renegade. Yeah, we're just dodging, okay. So this is Ushar. He looks cool. And Sargon... Not as cool. We cannot stay here. Let me just quickly add some music and let's. Oh, I don't have like the, all the graphics up. It's fine. It, it looks fine. Uh, that was one thing I wanted to add quickly. I don't remember though. It's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Scroll speed, scroll speed. My bad. Sorry for the interruption. There you go. So, what did he say now? Um. Uh, Ursababa will send more assassins. We cannot stay here, but I know of two villages where we could hide for a while. Okay. Okay, let's just go to the close one. We should get this town, I suppose. Okay. Now we have a bunch of things. Do I have a market? I don't. So I cannot build farms yet. Kill Ursababa is the quest. Let's look around, see what's happening, what we can find. Eco-management is a bit different. All I want to do is get to the Bronze Age and get the wheel. Wheel is a 50% buff to... to villager movement speed, so it's pretty insane. I think what we also need. Urzababa's forces have occupied several mines in this area. We should seize them. Okay, I'm just scouting. They said I can use uh, Sargon in the fight, right? Make Sargon the new ruler of Kish by killing Urzababa, yeah. Do not hesitate to use Sargon in battle. But Ushir, I guess, will not resume Ushar, but he has to stay alive. I need to fix my hotkeys, I think. There we go. Uh, how do we make traders, though? I guess that's also the third age. We are meant to kill the prodigal cupbearer. No, we are. The, we have the prodigal 
Cupbearer and Sargon. Okay, so purple is there, Port Sipa. We are just gonna farm up, get that food income, get to the Bronze Age. Guarded southern gates of Kish will cost many lives. Our scouts report that the gates to the north are barely protected, however. Okay, so they want us to attack up here. Still think I will just get to the Bronze Age first. I do not expect to be attacked. I could, of course, be mistaken, but we'll see. Is it fixed to go back to work? Uh, it was not fixed yesterday, so it would surprise me. It is fixed today. Yeah, are there any elephants in the area? We have some gazelles. Replace Zippar's temple with one of your own. Replace Borsippa's temple with one of your own. So with this and this. All right, we'll get there. All in due time. Aren't you supposed to take all the other teal village as well? I think I was only supposed to go to one, and now I can trade with the other. I don't think I will get control of the other one as well. Although I could be wrong. Oh. I think we're strong enough here. Seems fine. It's a hero unit, they will also regenerate, so... All good. Yeah, let's go to the Teal Village to see if we can actually get it. Don't think we can, but it doesn't hurt to find out. I wonder if this gets extra attack to my heroes. Plus two attack. Triple barracks! Okay, up to the Bronze Age we go. So let me just check what the... Uh, Sumerians have going for them. They also have more HP, 15 extra hit points. Stone thrower catapults and heavy catapult fire 45% faster. The farms have more food and camels have plus one pierce armor. And as a team bonus, town centers are cheaper. I reckon we'll stick with... Maybe we'll make some catapults and... Maybe just broadswordsmen? They're so cheap, so it might make sense. Although we have only 75 populations, maybe we should go for more... Maybe we should go for more expensive uh, units. Uh, Sargon's getting quite low. He's regenerating, right? Yeah. So all good. Do I even need extra... I don't think I need extra town centers, because, again, we're... Pop capped at 75. We're limited to 75 population. Oh, we do have a temporal. Okay, do we get plus two? Oh, yeah, we do get plus two attack. Let's do the armor upgrade as well then. We'll just drop a seed workshop and we will build catapults and maybe academy units, the hoplets. Is that what they're called? Hoplet, yeah. I tried stone throwers yesterday and they seemed to outrange towers. That's nice. Convert him! Yeah, we got a short swordsman. That was a quick conversion. We used to have 10 range, that's insane. I probably need gold as well. Given that we are gonna. Making siege units. They want to push the top side. They did say it's mostly unguarded, so. Double priest hit points, priest move faster. They seem nice, even though I only have one priest. Uh, what's the building for the academy?
Do I not have access to the academy? Oh, I need to have built a stable to get academy. I did not know that. That's good to know. Doubt, Doubt, we got more chances. Doubt has more chances. He is now in an elimination match against um, against Valas. Okay, let's build some stone throwers. Stable. Now I should be able to build the academy. Yeah, there we go. F. Okay. Bit of a slow build up, but we'll start putting pressure now. Now we have wheels, so the villagers are on steroids officially. Oh, okay, that's fine. We don't really care about the archers much. That's all. That's completely fine. Let's try to shoot here. Oh, they do dodge when you shoot. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah, they have 10 range. The tower has 9 range. So we do indeed outrange the towers. Let me zoom out a little bit more so we get a bit more view of the field. Can convert that guy. Healing is pretty slow, isn't it? One tower down, we'll just work our way to the other towers. Uh, Mem's capture age overlay was incorrectly indicating that there was an el elimination match during the first couple of games against Doubt Villa. Ah, okay. The hop are so slow though. But I guess it'll be worth it. Let's get the extra attack. That is fine. Don't need this, mu this much wood. Chariots also have so much rain. What? <gasps> he converted my mangona <laughs> or the stone thrower. And he has a catapult, which I think is the upgraded version of the thing. Well, this doesn't feel safe. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna dive in though. I don't like that they have... Oh, uh, sure, let's get out of there. Okay, this may have been a mistake. Sargon is fine, he's gonna... If he dies, he will... Um... Yeah. Oh, he killed his own unit. <laughs> oh, I can convert that. Back. Don't you need, like, an attack to convert? Doesn't look like it. And now we're being attacked. Maybe the hoplets were a bad idea. They seemed like they had like Imperial Age upgrades. I know army. I know. We're I wasn't expecting them to have so much. <gasps> Why is everyone attacking me? I guess archers as well are good against. Oh wait, I have some stuff here I can do. Barracks units take half population. Actually, it's not not really helpful. This is fine, this is fine. We got a conversion in the end, but... Wait, wasn't... No, the ar didn't the narrator tell me to attack the north? Did they say the bottom was heavily guarded? Did I completely misread that? <laughs> uh, an attack on the heavily guarded southern gates, yeah, will cost many lives. Our scouts reports that the gates to the north are barely protected. They were definitely more than barely protected, I would have to argue. But hey, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, we don't really have too much gold besides this. Sargon should come back soon. And also, I don't really need more villas or town centers, so we just stick with what we have and we just build up our horses from this. I believe in the hop hoplets still. Try to get some more stone flowers out. We still, we're floating resources. 
I don't like monks though. I, that one. If the AI is gonna keep making monks, that's gonna trigger me heavily. Over time. This is fine, this is fine. Only thing I don't like is that they're so slow. The uh... The hoplets. You attack the bottom. They didn't the camera pan to this? Oh wait, am I just stupid? I might be stupid. So they meant to like go to the north. As in another. So this is the south. The north will be up here. Okay, I'm I'm just stupid, sorry. I'm now I'm now I'm gonna just continue attacking the, the south because I wanna be cool like that. Man, conversions are so fast as well. Like, I'm just committed right now. <laughs> I can't... I, I, I can't pull back. Makes sense. I, I may have misunderstood. It's an early stream, so it's still a bit uh, early for me, okay? We are... Wait, can I get... I cannot get to the next age. We are fighting against the age... An age higher than us. Uh, probably want to send Ushar home. What can go wrong? We're fine, we're fine. Monks are gonna be the end of me. Maybe I shouldn't attack this. <laughs> okay, screw this, screw this. Abort, abort. I, I go for the other... Let's attack the mines first. I changed my mind, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Also, I think I'm gonna... Stop making hop blitz because they're just so goddamn slow. So if we do this one, uh, barracks units takes half the population. We can also afford a lot more units, or have a lot more units on the field. So I think that makes sense. So we'll do it like that. Only scary part here will be if they attack. Oh no! They attacked my gold miners because that's the only gold I have right now. So, which is also another reason for why we should take this. These things do a lot of friendly fire, I've noticed. Why not boom on the the bills? Because I'm limited to 75 population. There's no point for me having that many bills when my population is limited to 75. I mean, the hoplets are strong once they get to fight, but they're just so slow. Which makes it a bit awkward. Okay, we'll add some barracks now. And we'll start making... Those things. Plus 15% hit points for all horse units and camel riders. I'm not making those. Should I do the shared exploration? Because I think Teal is my ally. Although, maybe he's not. Build time, building wall hit points, sure. Line of sight of all buildings, sure. We can afford it, so why not? Okay, let's prepare the upgrades there. And we will just attack here now. I may have misunderstood the start of the... of the... the, the what they intended with their comments, so I might be a slight fault here for... for this being a bit slowed down, but I mean, it's a, it's a Viper campaign, what do you expect? That's how it works. When is Sargon coming back, by the way? How long does it take? He said it was but a scratch. <gasps> okay, let's add five of those. Okay, let's just run here. Bills are so fast anyway, so we can probably do it. Try Slinger Master pit Pizza. Don't know if Slingers will help. I mean, they are they do have a lot of infantry, don't get me wrong. Let's see if we can convert one of the stone throwers. 
Yes, we could. And splash damage. Yeah, we're fine there. Oh, oh no. Don't like how much they micro. Wait, you cannot repair them? Can monks heal them? Wait, you heal the stone throwers with the monks? Okay. So in every one you heal C Junis with uh Ooh. Oh with monks. <laughs> Sargon lied indeed. Maybe it's just that oh he's gonna come back next mission. Who knows? Yeah, this is still fine, this is fine. We have resources plenty. Too much wood actually even. More gold here, let's go there. Let's push this supposedly not well-guarded area, which kind of seems like it makes sense, because they have Axemen. Axemen shouldn't be that scary of a unit. I think with in, like the barrack units taking half population is very convenient for these types of missions. You can just afford to have so many more, so many more uh, units on the field due to that. Okay, they wanted us to build a monastery in their in the place of their temple. Since the city will turn loyal to me, I'm just going to destroy the monastery and we go and build a monastery there ourselves. I don't really want to try to kill too many villagers. Preferably. Just the military. We want to do minimum damage to the city. And hope that they don't attack our villagers either. Okay. Nothing remains of Borsifa's temple but smoking ruins. Build a new place of worship here so that the people can henceforth dedicate their lives to Ishtar. That's right, that's right. We're almost there. No, not the villagers. Well, the villagers are so fast, fast when they have wheelbarrows, that's fine. Okay, it's almost up, so we should be able to get this city now. So, I guess they don't become my color, but they just become an ally. Okay, that's fine as well. We can live with that. Okay, uh... I guess we just work our way to the top and try to get a temple here as well. I could try and attack from this side too. Ever since we went for the long swords, we have a lot of units on the field. Or broad swords? Broad swordsmen. <laughs> yes. Takes some time to get used to all the all the things. Happy birthday to you as well, Morten. Isn't bottom side red enemy? Sargon said south, so isn't bottom. Bottom is red enemy. I guess the bottom is just I can it's just gold there. Like a very Ah, it was just lit up because it was the same as this one. It was just like a small garrison with gold mines. So I completely messed that up. By the way, can you guys let me know if the sound volume is fine for everything? Or is, is the music too loud? Is the is anything too low? I do remember that. That's why I'm here at your land, sir. Yeah, we're floating wood. Actually, we're floating everything. Might even have too many bills at 40. Did they not bring bills? Yeah. You guys are going to build a temple once we get there. Unless we get there faster from this side. Let's do a shared exploration with allies and see if I get vision of purple and teal. If they are on paper allies right now. Build more barracks forward. That's a dock. Looks pretty. Game music, I mean, we're barely hearing speaks, but all the sounds is fine. Yeah, the issue with this, that, that's something I've been voicing my opinion or voicing my concern about a long time. 
I wish they had a way to have dialogue sounds be a, its own volume slider. The issue right now is that if I turn up the volume slider for speaking, it will become the speech of every single speech in the game. So any game sound is like the villager, the unit is talking as I'm clicking. That will become way louder as well. So I, mean, I have this thing where I can turn up the volume like right now. Now it's going to be louder for you for the dialogues, but sometimes it's just like a one-liner and then I turn on the volume and it's like just blowing out your ears for no reason. Do I even, should I even destroy this city? This city I should not destroy. Let's send Vils here. We are already kind of through there. They will become allies. I don't have to destroy too much, but let's take out um, the towers at least that can kill my Vils. I'm not sure if I need to take out this top side even. I mean, let's just kill things anyway. Why not? Okay, let's take the temple. You can read from the screen. Yeah, you, I know you can read, but still. It is feels nicer when you can hear what they're saying f properly. Convert it. Apparently, you don't need an upgrade to convert siege. I thought you needed an upgrade, or at least, uh, I know you need an upgrade to convert buildings, like Redemption in AV2. And then you heal. Uh, it makes sense that you can heal them since you convert them without uh, unique tech as well. But let me see, there is one unique tech that says something like in the monastery or temple. Three conversion rate, convert and en convert enemy priests and buildings. So you can actually always convert siege without any upgrade. That's interesting. Uh hello? What was wrong with that priest? Oh. They have now seen the light. Their warriors will make fine additions to Ishtar's army. Yeah, we do get full vision here as well. Or once I do the shed exploration, I see everything. So that's nice. Uh, we'll prepare. So I started attacking the worst place. I'm kind of a dumb dumb sometimes. Sorry about that. It's okay. We're used to it at this point. I think we cleaned a lot of their armies here, though. Obviously, we lose our own units, but it's fine because we're gonna re we're gonna mass units here now. So in a few units down there, we need seed workshops here. We bring everything to, to the fight. Apparently they don't attack purple. Oh, they do. Almost 80 armor, right? Uh, I have 50 infantry units right now. And more to come. So I get a lot of military because they take half the population. Oh, I get food from my allies as well. That's nice. Yeah, essentially, you. I think going to this, this unit, the broadswords, and they have good stats as well. So you just go this unit, and you get enough units to actually push and kill. Let's just go. I think we have so much. So you want to kill Ursa Baba, the, which I imagine is the hero there. Only 2 3rd age, but you can probably cheese this mission even as well. Just build all these units and right-click him, right? I don't think you have to take it slow. I mean, you do take a lot of fire from the chariots, but... still think if you have enough units... As we see, AV2 pathing still holding dominance. This one I could probably take these, right-click him, and they would probably run straight through. So it's probably a clever, cheesy way to uh, just cheese this mission. Oh, they have the same range now. They upgraded them. I said I'm a dum-dum. I didn't say I'm on the level of the chat. Come on. The chat is the next level after that. These guys do have bonus damage. We don't like that. Maybe if you like make like 
15 camels you can probably run through and just kills kill Urza Baba. Just like that. Yeah, now it should be a... That's a wonder. Nice. I was right. This man has come to kill me. Just as the prophecy foretold. Yes, you were right, Mr. Urza Baba. And there you go. The taste of death is upon my lips. All is lost. I agree, sir. Now the typical delay before you get the victory screen. Here we go. On cue. Who corrected your mistake again? Us oh, dum-dums. You guys, you just stop lingering, you're lingering in the past, Nemesis. Focus, move on forward. Only dum-dums linger in the past. As we entered the royal palace in Kish, I swelled with joy and pride. Sargon had triumphed. And it seemed that this man, blessed by Ishtar, so the guy talking now is Ushar. Truly invincible. Yet in my quiet moments, I wondered if it would ever have come to this if Urza Baba had not expelled Sargon. Had we fulfilled a prophecy? Or had a simple dream become prophecy? Only after the fearful king sealed his own fate. Dreams and oracles. Visions and prophecies, it seems that these mysterious forces can be as dangerous to those who believe in them as they are to those who ignore them. Good stuff. So that was chapter one of the... I have forgotten the name of the campaign. Sargon of Akkad? I think that was the name. Yeah, they had 169 military, damn. I got 700 resources in it, so yeah, make makes sense to get friends. Friends are good, okay? But you can actually spectate with capture age, so I could open, I could open the campaign now and spectate the everything in the in capture age that I just went through. All right, that was the chosen one, Sargon of Akkad, chapter one in the books, history books. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one called Divine Will. Goodbye.